This is a Photoshop video tutorial on channels. If you go to the top pull down menu for window, channels, it's going to bring up this dialog box. A standard image taken from a digital camera is going to be taken with RGB, which is red, green, and blue. I tried to do this video using the RGB color space. However, I realized that I couldn't actually do it because it became way too confusing without bringing in the entire color theory behind it. So I'm going to sidestep that entire topic and I'm actually going to go up to image, mode, and the reason that I'm going to do that is because it's a lot simpler to understand how cyan, magenta, yellow, and black mix together to create an image than it is to explain RGB unto itself. However, I want you to understand that RGB is going to work very similar to this cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So with that said, within this channels palette, you have this first line item that says CMYK. That is all of the other channels mixed together. If I click on just the cyan, what it does is it creates a grayscale image of just the cyan. The blacker the area is, the more cyan fills that area. And the whiter it is, the less cyan is filling that area. So if you look at the uh, composite image, you can see down here on the side of the building, it's, it's a yellow-orange, not blue. And the sky is blue. So when I click on just that cyan channel, you can see that it starts filling in the cyan in the top, in the trees, but not on the side of the house. If I go to the next channel down, which is magenta, it looks completely different. And the reason is, in this image, there is no dominant red color. So it's just kind of meandering through this image. If I click on the yellow channel, once again, it's completely different. Here, it's filling in some color within the trees and the house, but not in the sky, because there is no yellow in the sky. It's blue. The last channel of black is used as a definer. That's what gives it the density within the image. So here, it's within the trees, but not in the snow or the side of the house. What I want to show you is cyan by itself, when I mix it with the magenta, this is what the color looks like. It looks like one of those old photographs that's faded. That's because yellow is usually the first to go. And that's why it kind of looks like this. However, if I put the yellow color back in, it's going to look like this, but it's lacking any of that definition. And that is coming from this black channel. And when I click on the top, that selects all the different channels. So that is very quickly an understanding of the different channels that are within a single image. The thing is, when I was working with RGB, which is what your camera is going to take, it was a lot harder to explain, which in very short, here I could say that the black is the filling of the color, but RGB works differently, is a lack of color. But then when I was working in the channels, that wasn't necessarily true, even though it was, and I, I just completely skipped over all that. Just to move on to some of the other things that you can do from within this palette. If we click on one of these individual channels, I can come down here to this button right here and I can uh, select it, which is going to load the channel as a selection. So if I click on that, you can see that I have Marching Ants, which is adding as a selection. And I can show you that if I click on the Quick Mask, everything that's green is currently selected. And then you can see that it shows up as a channel. This is only a temporary channel because if I unclick the quick mask, it disappears, and you're left with the selection again. I can go to the next button over, which is Save Selection as a Channel, and when I do that, it creates an alpha channel. I will be discussing alpha channels in a separate video, which you can find over at www.theartofretouching.com. So by clicking on that, it shows it as green and a selection, because it's still loaded as a selection, and the green is just a way to differentiate this alpha channel from the other channels. If I double click on it or click over here and go channel options, same thing, I can rename the channel, I can show masked areas, selected areas, a spot color. Spot colors uh, will be covered in the alpha channel video. I can change the color of the channel the way that it visually displays in Photoshop. Now this isn't actually changing the color of anything. It works very similar to masks. It's just 
a definer. It's just a way to separate it from everything else. So what I'm going to do is deselect, and then I'm going to click on this bu next button over, which is Create New Channel. And when I do this, it's going to create a black channel, which means that this black is a fill of a mask, but not an actual color. So I can use my brush tool to do that. And when I turn on my layers, you can see the way that it handles it. And this is only as a visual. Again, this gets into alpha channels, which is more complex, which is why it's going to be covered in a completely separate video. I just want to show you that you can create more channels from using this palette down here. And if I select both of those channels, I can click the last one, which is going to be delete current channel. And then I'm going to throw them all away. And this is going to bring me back to where I was before. Next up, I'm going to select one of these channels, and I'm going to go to the pull down here. And uh, we just did new channel. We can duplicate the channel. And then when I choose to show that as well, it shows it as red which again is just a defining color. If I double click on it, I can change it to whatever I want. That channel and that channel are in fact duplicates of each other. Hence the name duplicate channel. I showed previously that I can delete the channel and uh, new spot channel is the same as that button down there. Uh, split channels. Okay, you ready for this when I click this button? Bam! What it actually did was it took each of those channels and created a separate image for each and every one of those channels. The original image is no longer existent. Why in the world would somebody want to do that? Well, mostly I have no idea because there's other ways to approach this. Back in the day, and we're talking, I don't know, maybe... 15, 20 years ago. These images that we were working on were so large, they were hard enough for the computers to work on. Never mind actually transport these images to another location. For example, taking it to the printer. So the way that we got around this particular problem is that we were able to break apart images and we would send individual channels and then they could be reassembled on the tail end after they were sent over as individual pieces. So think of it like if there's four channels, say so magenta, yellow, and black, you would put one channel on each disk. Back then there was a DCS file format, which would save a master channel as a 72 DPI image, I do recall, just as an FPO for placement only image, and then and then it would break apart into the individual channels as well as these extra alpha channels. And then the printer could reassemble everything back on his end. That's the only reason I can think that this might even still be in here. Part of a legacy thing. Totally unnecessary. And I do want to show you in the history palette, there is no history. Once I broke it apart, we were all done. Here I can click Merge Channels. And I'm creating a multi-channel image. Let's say CMYK color, four channels, OK. Now I can go back in and tell it cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and I can redefine these colors. And then go OK, and it puts it all back together again. And that's how the printer would do it. And then the last options here are uh, just for the panels closing these uh, palettes and stuff. So this is going to wrap up the video tutorial on channels and the channel palette. I hope I didn't make this too complicated, uh, even though it definitely ran a whole lot longer than I thought it was originally going to. If you'd like to learn more about alpha channels, spot channels, and the channel mixer, please go to www.theartofretouching.com, where we have more free video tutorials that will explain a whole lot more about Photoshop and help you become a better retoucher.